Yo, what's up, what's up, y'all? This is Street Smart Sarge here, and I'm back, y'all. Thank you for coming back for another one of Virginia's Gangsta Files. Yeah, y'all. Check this out, y'all. I got a good one for you from D.C., all the way from D.C., the district capital. Yeah. It was a guy back in the day by the name of Kevin Gray. Now, some people might know Kevin to be a big boss from the southeast part of D.C. Yeah. I'm going to get into this story because this story has got all the action. You know, I know it's all about, you know, reflecting on the past. But, you know, if y'all know the past, then you can't go forward. So, let's go ahead and get into this jump. It's about Kevin Gray, Big Boss. Yeah, uh, thanks for all the support, y'all. Thanks for tapping in. All my supporters, I love you. And now let's get into this story for, about Kevin Gray. Kevin Gray. Mr. Gray was, a, was about 14 when... He noticed the streets, and he really took to the streets. He 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 was the he said he he was the type that you know would um, sit back and watch everything, and you know soak in everything that's going on around him. So he paid real close attention to the streets. He was. It was his way to survive, you know, from being in poverty. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wanted to be fly and, you know, go without, you know, having to go without food and, you know, make sure his little, you know, his family had food. So that's what, you know, the street life was for him in the beginning. But as he got older, you know, it was more with the... Uh, Things that come with it, you know, the respect, the mood, the money, the girls, the women, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it 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 got into it got with him, like the streets got with him at a young age. So he was very influenced by the streets. Yeah, Kevin had an also an uncle who was also out there in the street. He his uncle was well known cat. All th- Southeast D.C. His name was Big Limbwood. And he, you know, he was, um, he had trouble with the law also. He was supposed to have been some uh, big time heroin international um, trafficker. So he actually did beat that. He did not get charged for the for the um, trafficking charge. He was um, he was charged. He did get locked up for tax evasion. They did lock him up for tax evasion. So you know he seen his uncle in the streets, got a name for himself, and like I said, he just took to the streets a whole lot easier. It was it was easy for him to be a street. You know, a street dude on the streets. You know what I'm saying? That was his uncle. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he was he was already in the streets before he even knew he was in the streets. He was just influenced by his uncle at the time. So, you know, that's what he looked at. That's what he saw. They wanted to solve the murder so bad that they went and locked him up on one murder. And then they went and made deals with other co-conspirators. And then they applied the rest of the murders and how they worked out, you know, the rest of the murders they were going to pin on them. See, D.C. hadn't had any any person with one person with just those charges. So he was the first to, to, to get charged with all those murders by one person in the district, you know what I'm saying? And that's that was crazy. Like I could say at the time, 
the district was the murder capital of the United States. Like every people was dying out there, like for real, for real. So, you know, like I said, this is more like, you know, what I get from the story. So to continue on, Kevin Gray used the element of surprise. Well, I can't say he used the element of surprise, but that was the technique used through the crew. The element of surprise. How was the murders, was how the murders were executed. The element of surprise will will mess up anybody's train of thought because when the person shows up broad daylight and, and, and just pulls that gun in your face, broad daylight, masked up, gloved up, you know, you 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 at the mercy of their hands. For sure. The crew used the element of surprise on all his victims. At one time, they pulled up to a beauty salon and shot a nigga up right there on the spot. Same at a gas station. They just, that's what they do on, on site. The crew reigned for the next 12 years in D.C. The murders were, were basically unsolved. Nobody had any evidence against the crew. When he was locked up, bodies were still getting dropped because they were still, you know, putting the citizens and people that were trying to testify against him. So, you know, who got dirty and, you know, a couple of people got murdered. As a matter of fact, 11. <laughs> That's crazy. But, you know, in that time in D.C., in the late 80s and through the 90s, D.C. was, like I said before, the murder capital of the United States. So the police, they just couldn't keep up. The police needed to call in the feds because the feds were really trying to get this under wraps. Because right now, they won't, they, that wasn't the only people that were murdering people because their murder count came up to like 31 and I mean, for it to be the murder capital from that, you know, that period of time, for it to be the murder capital, I know it was more than 30 murders committed in, you know what I'm saying, through the city. I know it was way more murders than that. So, you know, it was way more. It's, the city was live. It was, it was people dying, body stacking up, body count high. I mean, you, if you if you weren't there, you probably couldn't imagine the the fear that most people lived in that time, because it wasn't safe out there on the street. Even if you were a big dog, it wasn't safe out there. You better had you a vest, a bulletproof vest, a, a a a gun with plenty of shots and extra clips. Yeah, the feds just wanted this high profile case so bad that they just turned. They wanted to turn co-defendants into government witness offering short time for their testimony on hits and people killed by the crew. The government was trying to do everything they can. It's just like the police was trying to do everything they can. But like I said, it was so fast at that time and everything was going down like it was. It was probably people getting killed while the feds was out there getting bodies was getting dropped. Kevin Gray is a Southeast D.C. legend. But looking back on the way D.C. was, you had to be smart, fearless, and trained to go. I believe they were living in a war zone. I'm sure a lot of friends they knew and grew up with were also murdered. So fast forward to 2017, looking back, Kevin Gray is still locked away. But he was interviewed by the DC organization One Nation, a positive outreach program that connects at-risk youth 
of incarcerated males to give real talk to youth. The goal is to educate the youth of dangers of street prison and to be positive examples of overcoming adversity against all odds. Now, you know, that ends the story of Kevin Gray. I hope y'all, you know, got a lot from there. Because, like I said, he's a legend. You know what I'm saying? From D.C. And it took, you know, it takes some time for people, you know, when you're young, and a lot of things going on dealing with money and crime, you know what I'm saying? It takes some time for for a young person's mind to even understand the whole thing. You know, it's like you living an unreal life. You know what I'm saying? You think this ability of doing what you're doing is going to never run out. But, you know... I mean, you, you don't think you're going to get caught, basically. And then when you do, it's, it's always, you know, it's always, a, you know, I should have stopped, but, you know, kept going. So this is Street Smart Sarge, man, and I hope y'all like this one right here. Check me out. Virginia Gangster Files, I'll be back with another one. Holla.